Good morning, and welcome to Morning Java here on DKPittsburghSports.com. I'm Chris Carter here with Matt Grubba, and we are talking lots of different things. Right now, we're going to start off with Steelers rookie minicamp. Mm -hmm. that, that happened this past weekend. All the new guys getting in, people getting to talk to Mason Rudolph. Um, Dayon, Dayon wrote a very interesting piece on can some of those new guys push those players and I guess I think my my guy that that I'm that I'm really looking at right now is of course James Washington at Oklahoma yeah. State. Um, we were, I was talking to Dayon about that position and just how the Steelers clearly have their one and two set with Brown and Juju, but you know with Eli Rogers and is how's his injury going to pan out? If there is Hayward Bay, you know he's going to be that that perennial special teams guy is James Washington the guy that will automatically get inserted into that third wide receiver spot and I just think that's an obvious yes for me yeah and that's a spot certainly that that's basically a starting role in the Steelers yeah. offense because a uh, lack of reliance on a regular fullback yeah. and it, so I mean that's a guy that you know you get that third role 60 70 catches possibly as your ceiling I mean mm -hmm. that, that could be a key player going forward uh, and and Washington's a guy that I know Pitt fans are you know hate seeing him mm -hmm. flying down the field the way he did against them so mm -hmm. you know you know he's got the raw talent just how pick, quickly does he pick up NFL offense you know acclimate to the way some of these pro defensive backs are going to be playing him off the line I mean Juju came in last year he was mm -hmm. the third guy coming in and right he almost got a thousand yards if Ben Roethlisberger mm -hmm. didn't take the last well one and a half games off or so yeah. um, but so I mean I think that's very that's very doable. It's an interesting position the Steelers are in right now because you know people wondered why didn't they invest more in their defense? You know Terrell Edmonds got a look like he might have got a little bit of looks at inside linebacker just as just for show. Mm -hmm. um, of course it's mini camp. Literally nothing that they yeah. do here do not judge it like it's actually going to happen. It's just them testing out everyone, getting them used to seeing them in football in shorts. Yeah, and, D and Dale and I were sitting here last week and we talked about what rookie minicamp is really. I mean, it's more orientation for a job rather mm -hmm. than it is actually seeing you perform on the job. So right. we'll, we'll start to see in a few months where these guys really fit in and how the Steelers see them for the future. Now, on the other aspect, what everyone was talking about with Mason Rudolph, mm -hmm. you know, getting his first looks with the team, People were saying, look at these throws from Mason Rudolph. I'm like, literally, it doesn't matter how he throws right now. But what it does matter is how he handles the media and how people try to mm -hmm. throw, to, throw those rocks at just, the, at just the notion like, hey, Ben Roethlisberger said this. Does that make you feel anything? And Rudolph sort of just handled it as you would want a rookie to handle it. And that's the thing. I mean, he is from a major conference, a Big 12 kid. You know, Oklahoma State, he gets, football is huge there, obviously, mm -hmm. in Oklahoma. So he's used to getting attention, maybe not quite from, you know, Pittsburgh media on the Steelers market, but he's seen those sorts of questions before, you know, where it's, you know, not necessarily a gotcha question, but, you know, they want to get some personality out mm -hmm. of them, and sometimes with guys that gets them in trouble when mm -hmm. they really let their personality show. Yeah, and especially it's the competition question. You know, Ben Roethlisberger mm -hmm. went on the radio saying he thought the Steelers should have drafted uh, you know, so, somewhere else because they 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 need to win now, um, and of course that sparked you know that opened the door for Rudolph to say something, and he you, Rudolph I mean professionally he just said you know what if I was in his position I'd say the same thing, and that's kind of yeah. a good way to just douse the whole situation as far as making sure well, you can't get anything out of me, and jo even Josh Dobbs who, who's going to be he's a second year player now, you know he was just like you know what we welcome to the team he's going to make us better I'm all for that you know that this is how you want. To, to smother a situation before the media starts something up. Otherwise, you got Ben Roethlisberger hates Todd Haley right. for the for five straight years. Right. Now, the other thing I wanted to ask you about with uh, these young guys in there, you've got Mason Rudolph. They also have another rookie, Alec Torgerson, a kid from Penn that was mm -hmm. undrafted in there. How important are these rookie mini camps for them in terms of just getting them one-on-one -on -one time with their coaches when, you know, obviously when Ben's in there, when the veteran guys are in, the position coaches are going to be focused on the probable starters more than anything. So, you know, how much time is just this one-on-one -on -one with the coaches, do you think, helping them? Well, relationships are always huge mm -hmm. in getting and making sure you remain in the NFL, making sure you establish a connection with your coaches and show, like, hey, even if I get cut this year, I want you to know that I take this seriously and that this is and, – and that show that you're processing the playbook, you're asking the right mm -hmm. questions – and show that you're serious, and who knows? I mean, when you're that guy, when you're in torches and positions, you're not looking to get a starting job in the NFL. Right. I mean, sure, dream world, yes, but yeah. realistically, you want to be able to earn a practice squad mm -hmm. spot because I know the playbook, and if everything goes to the world's worst, if Pittsburgh <laughs> loses four quarterbacks, and you know, they, I want to be, yeah. be on that list so that they can say, like, you know what, this is a guy that we just want to keep around. Hey, he's an Ivy League kid. Who what doesn't dream of being the next Sage Rosenfeld, right, oh, yeah, in the yeah. NFL? <laughs> or uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, there you go. 
Before you guys tear me apart in the comments, look, I realize I misspoke last. I meant Jay Fiedler, not Sage Rosenfels, was the Ivy League quarterback. I get my bad Dolphins QBs mixed up. Matt, I get those guys mixed up. There were so many of them. They are on competition with the Browns list of quarterbacks exactly. over the past, since Marino. Um, so no problem on your part. I think uh, everyone understands uh, what, what you're going with All right, with good. Now, but, now let's talk about guys who are still playing in the NFL. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still talking about the Steelers and... You know, we t Mason Rudolph, the Ben Roethlisberger comments, we talked about all that, about maybe they should have put it toward a defensive player. Well, our, our Dale Lally, you know, wrote about that a little bit and said, you know what, the Steelers' defense doesn't need to be number one in the league, be some standout thing to, for them to be a contender. And he pointed out, look at their last Super Bowl team in 2010, 2011. Uh, you know, you talk about guys like Flozell Adams in the lineup. I mean, there were some holes on that offense. Jonathan, Jonathan Scott, Chris yeah. Kimawatu, mm -hmm. um, Doug Ligurski was always often in the starting lineup. Heinz Ward was over the hill. Let's, yeah, I mean, let oh, me, yeah. I mean, and Heinz Ward <laughs> was still amazing because he brings the, he brings that kind of tenacity right. to the game, but he was not even 2008 Heinz Ward. Yeah, he, he, he wasn't Super Bowl MVP Heinz Ward. Right, and, yeah, yeah, I mean, he was, that was five years after mm -hmm. that point already, or six years, but... My, but I think Dale made a great point. When, and I've said this for years when people have talked about the Steelers' defense and Ben Roethlisberger, and they need to do more Ben Roethlisberger. I'm like, listen, when Ben Roethlisberger was young, the Steelers' offense would consistently rank in the 20s, but the defense would always be number one, number two, number mm -hmm. three. And for, for a, I think it was, a, it, was like, it was like a 10-year period or so of Dick LeBeau, the Steelers ranked, I don't know, it was, it was eight straight years, they ranked number one um, in, in at least two major categories. Right. And, and so... They were, they were at such a high level of dominance that they made up for an offense. And the thing is, now, the shoe's on the other foot. The offense has all the superstars. Yeah. They have the super offensive line, the, the, the superstar wide receiver, the superstar running back, the franchise quarterback. You got the weapons, it's just, but you still haven't seen this offense be the undisputed number one offense in the NFL. And when people point at, and Dale's, Dale's point is, when people point at the defense and, oh, they're missing this and, oh, they're missing that, well, yes, a, a, a team is going to be missing when they're hitting on something else. Yeah, and it's the salary cap era, too. Mm -hmm. You can't have a star at every position. Right. And you look through history. I mean, you look at the Ravens in 2000 and the Buccaneers shortly after that mm -hmm. were teams that were just loaded on defense. And their offenses, I mean, in the Ravens' case, were, was bad yeah. for a lot of that season. Yeah. And then on the flip side, some of these Patriots championship teams, you know, will have a high-flying offense. Mm -hmm. And their defense, the you know, never, never terrible. Defense. Yeah, they would rank, you know, 15th, 16th, just yeah. middle of the pack. And mm -hmm. so it's easy. I wouldn't say easy, but it's easy to at least make the playoffs and contend like that. Of course, when it comes to playoff time, that's when it comes down to just the matchups and X's and O's. And, and, and that's the thing. is You see those matchups, you want to see those advantages. But mm -hmm. the thing is that you've seen a lot, a lot of people, a lot of people get frustrated. They've seen defenses like the Seahawks and the Broncos come through in recent years and say like, okay, those teams, we want to be like those teams. Why aren't the Steelers like those teams? It's like, listen, the Steelers do have playmakers on the NFL. Yeah. But also I think what's a very important reminder is Outside of John Bostic, Vince Williams, Cam Hayward, Morgan Burnett now, and Joe Hayden, everyone else on that defense is 25 or younger. Right. Now, switching it up, we're going to have a fun segment here, Matt. Okay. We're going to talk about sports memes and what are our <laughs> personal favorites of sports memes. Now, for those who might not be kept up, memes are just when pictures are just fused together and they're used to make yes. jokes. Either short videos or little... Cut and paste, cut and paste things, like things that, that are just done. It, 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 it's so yeah. much of it is Photoshop. And mm -hmm. one, of, one of the favorite, I'll get it started talking about the crying Jordan meme. Yeah. It's obviously the greatest. It's funny. He's the greatest of all time in basketball. His meme has become the, fa the face from Michael Jordan crying at his Hall of Fame induction. They just put that on. If yeah. you lose, you're going to be getting some crying Jordan Yeah, you've, I've seen that just, you know, everywhere from poor sister Jean from yep. uh, Loyola after they lost in the final four, mm -hmm. his face put on her wearing the habits and in the wheelchair mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. after the U.S. missed the World Cup, seeing a U.S. flag with 50 little crying Jordans instead of 50 stars mm -hmm. after that. So you see that everywhere. The, the other one, you know, I always get a chuckle at is the, the Simpsons reference, Homer yeah. backing into <laughs> the bushes, and you've seen it so much this week yeah. with, you know, backing away wearing the Penguins jersey and popping oh. back out wearing the flurry Vegas mm -hmm. jersey, which... I think speaks a little bit to Penguins fans because we all do love Flurry. It's 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 funny. I remember last year, what was well the past two years, mm -hmm. they've used a popular meme. They used the the article that Kevin Durant wrote of my next chapter when he joined the Warriors, yes. and then everyone just started making like my next chapter and joining whatever team in <laughs> ever any sport. And so the Penguins were often the team that yes. Durant was joining. Uh, was joining, but I also think um, that one of the funnier ones, of course, is Allen Iverson in the one game that they beat the Lakers in in, yeah. in that NBA game 
finals. One. It was game, game one, one when he went ballistic and he crosses over Tyron Lue mm-hmm. and hits it and he just steps over him. That's the ultimate like I owned you type of <laughs> meme. Because I mean I mean I remember like people went out when Barack Obama beat Mitt Romney, people were putting Barack and Allen Iverson. <laughs> yes. And I was just like it's, those moments. Well, like, it goes for any one on one situation yes. too. It could it can be it could be you could put tennis players yeah. there, you could put you know, who whoever dominates someone in some forum. It's 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 that, the most, it works. It is the most disrespectful. I mean, if you remember that moment in sports, <laughs> Allen Iverson, like, crosses up, the guy falls down, hits the three, and it just looks at him as he steps over him. Like, you're, I don't even care about you. Now, meanwhile, Tyron Lue is the coach for the Cavaliers yeah. right now, and it seems like he really doesn't even coach the Cavaliers because LeBron James does it all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's done well for himself. He's yeah. still in the league, isn't he? And then, of course, I think anyone, you can always use SpongeBob memes in sports. Yeah. They always seem, seem to apply. Um, but yeah, there's there's a few out there that I think that are, are underused. Daniel yeah. Cormier, when he got knocked out by Deontay Wilder, I'm a boxing guy, I do mm-hmm. watch these things sometimes. Yeah. But I mean, he had the saddest face when they came up to him afterwards. I mean, this man got his face knocked off, and mm-hmm. they came up to him and asked him like, "How does it feel?" And he was just like, he had this horrible frown. It was just like, dang, like that, that's you know what? That's our next fun job. I should probably be the worst post match interviews because oh, they're probably, always you know in boxing. What? Why do you talk to the loser after a boxing yeah, match yeah, after yeah, they got let, their let, him, let that guy recover, especially when they've been knocked out. Yes. Well, you know what? It might be fun too. Like if people, you out there will put in the comments if you've got one we've forgotten a meme that you like. You know, share it with everybody because you know everybody needs a good laugh. We're here, uh, you know, going through football rookie camp that sort of thing. Let's get some entertainment going. So put down your favorites in the comments. Let us know. Have a bit interesting discussion. Thanks, Matt, for the suggestion. Mm-hmm. And thank you for watching Morning Java.